is a podcast from BBC Radio 1. One. One. Belleville, New Jersey, 1987. A lonely young boy walks down the street. A comic catches his eye. What's this? The X-Men? You're too low, Angel. Fly higher. You serve no purpose but to increase my rage. I guess X-Men really appealed to me because they weren't, like, pretty and they weren't rich. And so, like, they were, like, kind of saving the world, but nobody knew they existed. I liked them because they were really disadvantaged. From that moment on, the young Gerard Way knew he was different and that one day he, too, would use his special powers to help the world. We are my capital! We come from New Jersey! We love My Chemical Romance. They're exciting and thrilling, and they're just a brilliant band, and they look great, they sound great. They're the whole package. Just the way that they inspire everyone, it's such a fantastic message. They're the outcasts of life and it's absolutely fantastic that, you know, they've, they've risen so high. I always wanted to, to help people and move people. I think that still motivates them to this day. But they're sent from God, honestly, that's how amazing they are. Sent from God? Some people think so. But maybe, just maybe, these five outcasts are the world's strangest superheroes. No emo teenage death cult are these, but just a misunderstood group of outsiders driven to help their fans here to save the planet. Introducing our heroes, I give you My Chemical Romance. My name is Bob Breyer, and I play drums in the band My Chemical Romance. I'm Ray, and I play guitar. I'm Mikey, and I play bass. My name is Frank, and I play guitar. This is Gerard Way, and I sing in the band. These five came together to experience adventures more incredible than any humans have ever known. And it all began in New Jersey, a suburb of New York City, with our first hero, some say heartthrob, Gerard Way. I was born April 9th, 1977, in um, Summit, New Jersey. I don't know why I was born in Summit. They probably just had a good hospital. But I lived all my life in Belleville, New Jersey. It's actually right next to Newark, New Jersey. It's just very industrial. It's one of the more crime-heavy areas, but it's the cherry blossom capital of the world. To understand the world's strangest heroes, we need to know what they were like growing up. Were they already marked out as outsiders from an early age? Me and Gerard kind of lived in a bubble. This is Mikey Way. He's singer Gerard's younger brother. Hung out with each other. You know, I didn't have many friends in high school because I dressed differently. Like the classic case of, you know, me in the back of the room drawing on my notebook, not really participating in school. We spent a lot of time reading comic books. We, we lived a lot in our heads. We played Star Wars stuff a lot, and we couldn't really play outside very much. It wasn't the safest area. Um, and it was very hard to find kids to play with that weren't, like, robbing bikes or starting gangs. So me and Mikey just stuck together. We had, like, one or two friends, and that was it. Gerard and Mikey weren't the only ones to experience isolation. Here's another member of the band, guitarist Frank Airo. Definitely never felt like I fit in in, in the uh, academic world. Never fit in in school. Never had, like, a, a real group of friends that liked me for who I was or, or liked the things that I liked. I tried to fit in, but didn't really succeed that well. And here's Ray Toro, curly-haired and talented guitarist. You could call him the outsider of outsiders, a classic metal fan in a sea of punk kids who is experiencing New Jersey life mainly from the inside of his house. Pretty much 24, 25 years I, I lived with my parents and I didn't go out very much. I hung at home most of the time. I didn't have, um, I didn't have a lot of friends. I, you know, I had some friends in school and, and then later on in high school. But for, mo for the most part, after school, I would just come home. And I remember um, doing things like computer-related and video game-related with my family. Like, that was kind of a big thing with me and my brothers and, and my dad, too. I don't know if anybody remembers. The Atari 2600 mm -hmm. was, like, a huge... Like, that was, like, the cutting edge of technology when that came out. and. You know, the whole family would sit around this giant 
Zenith TV that also played board games at the kitchen table like once a week. Lots of Trivial Pursuit, lots of Clue. I know especially my mom was kind of uh, like to see me stay either, you know, very close to home or, you know, just inside. Gerard. And then around middle school was that point where it starts to separate into cliques and stuff. Yeah, that's about the point where you realize if you fit in or not, and I didn't. You kind of become either the weird kid or the fat kid or whatever it is you become at that point. I was one of the weird kids. Don't think Gerard's overstating his own weirdness. Others who knew him and Mikey can confirm their status as genuine outsiders. Uh, I'm Alex Saavedra, president of Eyeball Records here in New Jersey. I've known Gerard and Mikey for years. We used to tease Mikey about looking like Harry Potter, tease uh, Gerard about you know, never leaving his house or playing Dungeons and Dragons, but we were all outsiders and we all got along well because of that. Mikey, when he was younger, wasn't a very confident guy, but... He was one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Gerard was on and off strange. Sometimes he'd like to hang out, and other times he'd be gone for six months. And he would just be in his basement drawing, drawing and smoking cigarettes, drawing and smoking cigarettes. That's all he would do sometimes. He'd get so engulfed with himself with drawing that he would just disappear. Early on, it became apparent that the young Gerard had an extraordinary talent, not for music, but for drawing. About middle school, I got real serious about being an artist because I actually realized it was the one thing that separated me in a positive way from everybody else. And it was the one thing that I could do that a lot of kids couldn't. The first week of high school, I completely didn't fit in, even less so. I was wearing an army jacket, some kind of ghost rider, t some kind of t-shirt with a skull on it or a heavy metal shirt. And I really was a complete and total loner. And so at lunch, I would sit alone. Uh, down the table from me were these seniors that were all like metalheads. So they all realized I can draw, so then they all wanted tattoos, even though they were, I think they were kind of too young to get them, or maybe some were 18. And so I drew this werewolf for this kid, which is pretty awesome, and he got it tattooed, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like, I just drew something, and somebody got tattooed on their body. And it got me in with them, and they, they liked me because I could draw. And realizing that you had this special ability was a big advantage. To describe that special ability, or superpower if you like, is Gerard's first art teacher from elementary school. I'm Ken Birdie. I was Gerard's teacher in uh, number four school. He had qu quite a talent, and he was always into comics. He always had comic books with him, especially like Wolverine. He, he sort of, I don't know if he identified with the character, but sort of a loner with the dark side, maybe, you know? Could it be that comics fan Gerard was, gasp, relating to the geeky but talented outsiders of the X-Men series? I guess X-Men really appealed to me because they weren't, like, pretty... And they weren't rich. They were like kind of saving the world, but nobody knew they existed. And they didn't get any credit for anything, and they were hunted down. So I liked them because they were really disadvantaged. They seemed way more real. Doom Patrol was a comic that Grant Morrison revitalized for DC about the time I was 15 and I worked at a comic shop. The Doom Patrol was even more disadvantaged than the X-Men, and that made them even more interesting to me. Gerard's outsider isolation was creating a dark sensibility. Gerard did the only thing he could. He went to art school in New York. And there he met a teacher who only added to his gothic outlook. I actually had a, a teacher named Mr. Leffelbein, 